So we've been uh, looking in, in Amos chapter 4. There might be some scriptures out there. You go. Um, that's from last week. <clears throat> but we've been in Amos chapter 4 talking about a spatial, um, a spatial time called a time of favor that Amos uh, spoke to the people of his day. And right now, we're talking really about this time when, when God releases his favor on his people in, a, in an abundant way. One of the things that happens is uh, he exceeds their expectations, all right? He exceeds their expectations. So in Amos chapter 9, in verses 13 and 14, I believe, um, there's some scripts here there where uh, we've been reading through it, where the prophet prophesied this and about, you know, sowing and planting and reaping and how quickly that's going to happen, about how abundant that, that fruit of all their labors is going to be. And, you know, they usually have to wait for the whole process, and it's a lengthy process, and, and let nature, so to speak, take its course and produce. But he said, when God comes and brings supernatural favor, he said, you're no sooner going to plant that crop than, boom, you're going to be reaping that crop. And you're going to be planting again, and you're going to be reaping again, and it's going to grow like never before. And the harvest is going to be plentiful. And the harvest is going to be a, a abundantly abundant. And he says, new wine is going to come and drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. And we understand that in the New Testament. We understand what new wine is, right? We understand that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the new wine of heaven. Just dripping down, coming down from above and coming down from the mountains. And, and then he talks about restoration is going to happen. Hallelujah. And being able to partake of the fruit of our labors, okay? So that's what we've been talking about. Um, if you want to just recap for a second here, uh, go to the next slide there, okay? So those are the descriptions of, of, a, of a time of favor that we've been talking about. The fertile ground is a yieldedness. We pray a spatial yieldedness. We're praying a spatial yieldedness upon our hearts and our lives. I want to be yielded to God. If I want to flow in the flavor, flavor, <laughs> that's good too. <laughs> if I want to flow in the favor and the blessing of the Lord, I, I need to be yielded. I can't be all hard hearted towards God. I can't be all um, about myself. I have to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. And then the atmosphere that accommodates miracle in that river of wine. Okay. So next, um, Rafa, um, in Amos chapter 4, uh, Amos describes here what has been happening in the land. In that land, it had not been a good time. It had been a time of drought. Remember us talking about that? It had been a time of drought, and um, all the, all the uh, kind of all the negative things that accompany a dry season. Negativity, we talked about last week, and pessimism. Um, just flooded the whole land. And we said, man, there's a lot of that going on right now in our country. Just a lot of that kind of stuff. And if we're not careful, we can get swept up in it. But we can look at all that's going on in our nation and spend all morning talking about it. But one of the things we have to guard against right now is not to be one of those that gets so drawn down in the negative, negative, is it? And the pessimism and, and just the depression. I, I know the enemy wants to put depression on people. It, it doesn't matter where you're, uh, how spiritual you are in one sense. I mean, uh, you can, spirit, being spiritual is certainly going to bring you out of depression, but spiritual people have to fight depression sometimes. Remember the prophet? Elijah, he, he was so, so depressed. And old Jezebel got a hold of him and everything. And, and uh, uh, it was a bad, bad thing. But one moment he was on the mountain. And the next moment he was down in the valleys. And remember when uh, the king uh, sent out uh, some people to look for the prophet. He said he'll either be on the mountain or he'll be down in the valley. <laughs> and that 
that doesn't mean just physically. It means that prophet. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be up on top of things and shouting and, 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 and declaring the victory. Or he'll be down there in the valley saying, Oh God, there's only a few of us left now that are serving. Okay? So that hits. It hits. But in the name of Jesus, we, we resist that depression. I find myself fighting it too at times. And I know it's a spiritual battle. And I don't want to ever, ever stay there. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, this, this is what was going on in the land. So here's the thing. The people and the whole atmosphere of the land was caught up in this thing of just nothing's going wrong. Nothing's going good. We got trouble in our land. It's, it, it, it's a down. <laughs> okay? And we're, we're depressed. And the, the, the effect of that was a low expectation of life. We don't expect much. We don't expect it to rain. We don't expect our crops to grow. We expect we're gonna have to really fight and battle for every little piece of uh, grain that we get. Um, we're gonna have to borrow from our neighbors. And there it says we're gonna have to run over here and try to get some over here in this town. We're gonna have to run over to this town and try to get some. And then whenever we get there, we find out there's not enough there. And so we're, we're really discouraged and we don't have much of an expectation. And, and we said, said this, dry seasons can lead to an expired expector, right? Dry seasons can lead to it. In, in other words, I'm just, done, I'm just done expecting great things. I'm just done trying to get my, get my hopes up and my expectations up to think that anything's going to get better or it's going to change or great things are coming. And, uh, and dry seasons can, can have that effect on people. So that's, we talked about that last week. But that's not where God wants us to live. There's a word that came from heaven through the prophet that says there's a new season going to be on us. All right? There's a new season that's going to come on us. All right? God will exceed my expectations if I expect him to. You know, David in the Bible, he was in the Old Testament, of course, but he lived with, with some expectation in his life, didn't he? He lived with some, an expectation. Well, you all know the story. He went out to fight Goliath, right? And what did he expect to happen? He stepped right up. And he said, here, here, let me, let me, just give me that assignment. Give me that assignment. The army was backing off, right? And the army was like, whoa, we don't, no, we don't have anybody here that can mess with Goliath. And little young David, he stepped up there and he said, I'll, I'll take that assignment. And what was his expectation? When Goliath stepped out and he saw little David out there and he looked at him, Goliath started laughing and started mocking him, didn't he? He said, I'm gonna, uh, boy, I'm going to take care of you today. And, and David replied by saying, you know what? This day I'm going to feed your body to the birds. That would be nice to, to the devil. I mean, you'd be good to, to people, but when you face the enemy, don't be nice. No. Tell him. Tell him the authority you have. Tell him you don't have that fear. Tell him you're not backing down. In Jesus' name, you're not backing down. You've got armor on, right? You've got a powerful name. The Lord is in this place. I'm not going to back down here. And so David spoke right back to him. He said, no. He said, you got it wrong, Goliath. I'm expecting great things today. And then he began to tell Goliath, I'm going to take you down today. I'm going to take you down. And I'm going to win this thing. And in Psalm 122 and verse 1, David lived uh, his life. I mean, he was high. He was low at times, wasn't he? Man, he was high and he was low. Um, <clears throat> but in Psalm 122, 1, he says this. He said, let's go to the house of the Lord. <laughs> let's go to the house of the Lord. All right? And you'll find him saying that again through the Psalms, Okay. And he says it again in, in uh, <clears throat> Psalms 100. 
he talks about going to the house of the Lord and having great expectation going into the house of the Lord. And so expectation has a lot to do with living and experiencing God's favor in these last days. And do um, you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, uh, in the last days, men's hearts are going to what? They're going to fail. They're going to get out of them. Why? Because they're going to be fearful. They're going to be fearful of life. And, and they're not going to find the strength they need within them. And their heart, their own, their own strength is going to fail them. And they're going to say, I don't have what it takes to face this stuff. I don't have what it takes to go through what I'm seeing is ahead of me. And I know we're going to be dealing with a lot of people like that, and we are now. People that just say, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. And their expectation in the last days is not going to be very high. Because Jesus said, troublesome times are coming. You know, who was it said, these are the best of times, but these are the worst of times. <laughs> Right? These are the best of times, but these are the worst of times. And that can be that way in the last days. It can be the worst of time for, for people. Or we as God's people can look at these times and we can say, it's the best of times right now. It's the best of times. God, God is going to show up in a mighty way in these last days. And it's going to be the best of times. But Jesus said, you know, people that don't have faith, People that aren't people of faith, they're going to be overcome in these last days and their strength is going to leave them. And they're not going to be able to fight these battles. And they're going to give up and they're going to get depressed and they're going to get down and they're going to be overtrodden. And they're going to result to all kinds of, of the world's ways in making it. Rioting, looting, all this stuff. They're going to result to all this stuff because their hearts are failing them. But Jesus didn't stop there. What did he say? But you do something different. You look up. Look up. Because your salvation is right here on you. Now, when Jesus said, look up, he, did, he not only was saying, you know, hey, Jesus is coming. He's going to split those clouds. He's going to come. He not only was saying that, but he was talking about in your, in your own hearts. Your, yeah, your mood and your attitude and and your position in life, right? How you're living life should not be as the other people you're going to be encountering in these last days. It should not be, oh, woe is me. Oh, it's fearful out there. Oh, it's terrible. We, we don't have what it takes. How are we going to make? No, he said, I want my people to be different. I want them to look up. I want them to have an expectancy. What do we say to people when their heads are all that? Hey, up. Things are going to get brighter. Things are going to get And we try to encourage him, right? And we tell him, hey, look up. Jesus was saying, look up. Don't, don't get down there with this world. Don't be down there with that same attitude in these last days. Live with an expectancy in your life, life because your redemption, he says, uh, old King James says, draw us near. But it means your, your redemption, your salvation, your Savior, your deliverer is right on you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so don't fear, okay? Now, in, in, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 4, there was a man, a prophet, I mentioned him earlier, Elisha, and he lived a life of expectancy. But here's the thing. He not only lived a life of expectancy, but he knew how to cultivate it in other people. So think about this now. God wants me to live a life of expectancy in these last days. But he doesn't want me to just live it for myself. He wants to use me to stir an expectancy and lift people up from where they're at and believe for greater things in these last days. Because I know the world's down there. Let's lift this world up in Jesus' name. 
I mean, let, let's let's don't just say, oh, the world's going to hell. Let, let's, let's say, hey, we're the ones who've got an answer. We are the one. We've got an answer for you. I got some good news, right? I've got some, I can pray with you. I can show you something here in the scriptures. I can talk with you. I got an inside scoop on this whole thing that's happening, right? And, and be someone that cultivates it. Now, just as an example, 2 Kings chapter 4 here. Um, <clears throat> there was a widow that Elisha came upon. And in verse 13, for, um, uh, Elisha comes upon her. And uh, she has been a blessing uh, to Elisha. She's a, a Shunammite. They call her the Shunammite woman, Shunammite widow lady. And uh, uh, in, uh, yeah, in chapter uh, four here, uh, Elisha, this is the widow, I'm sorry, let me back up. This is the widow, and she has two boys, right, in verse two. Um, and Elisha encounters her, and her husband was a good man. He was a man of God. He loved the Lord, he served the Lord, but he he left some debt behind. And in those days, if you couldn't pay your debt, they'd come take your kids or your boys and say, well, your boys can work our debt off, all right? So mama, keep your debts paid, right? <laughs> <clears throat> they'd come get your boys and say, well, your boys are gonna have to come with us and work their, work their debt off. Well. This, this lady, widow, she tells Elisha this story, and Elisha says, well, how can I help you? How can I help you? He didn't say, oh, man, you are in trouble. I don't know what you're going to do. God bless you. We'll be praying for you. <laughs> That's not what he said. He said, how can I help you? We gotta be saying that in these last days. Alright? We gotta say that in these last days. People are gonna come to us with stuff. Don't be one of them that says, well, you know what? You know, well, you're in a bad situation. I hope it works out for you. <laughs> no, what how can I help you? I got something. I got something. How can I help you? Let's talk about it. And so he says, well, let's start here. What do you got in your house? Here's the thing. For God's favor to work in our lives in a great way, we have to invest. We have to invest in God's work, in God's kingdom. We have to invest time. We have to invest money. We have to invest our lives. So he says, what do you got? Let's get this thing going. Let's get this blessing flowing. Let's get this favor rolling. Okay, what do you got? What do you have in your house? Now here's where she was living. Low expectation. All right? Low expectation. She goes, she goes on in verse, she goes, I, I got nothing at all. I got nothing. <laughs> nothing in my house. I don't have anything. And then, I suppose... Elisha was just kind of looking at her like, come on. And she says, okay, okay, she says, except, except I got a little bitty jar, a little bitty jar of olive oil. That's all I got. Well, you got something then. <laughs> you got something. So she's got these low expectations. I just got a little bit. First she said, I don't have anything. I'm not expecting anything. And Elisha says, well, here's what, here's what you do. We're going to build some expectation in your life. We're going to expect God to do something. He said, here's what you do. He said, go to all your neighbors and tell them, hey, I need, I need it. the biggest jar you've got available. The biggest vessel you've got available. And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to collect these vessels, as many as we can get. And he goes on in that whole story. He says, now listen, ma'am, 
When you go out and you ask for these vessels, he said, don't ask for just a few. Because I see where you're living. You've got low expectation. You're not expecting much out of life. But he says, I want to challenge you. Don't ask for just a few. Get as many as you can get because God's going to be in this thing. Right? God's going to be in this thing. And we're going to, we're going to expect not just a little bit. We're going to expect God to do something really great. And so that's what she did. She went out and she gathered all these, these jars and she got as many as she could get till she felt like she couldn't get any more. And then you know what happened, don't you? They took that little bitty, that little bit, that little bitty jar that she said was nothing. And Elijah said, let's start pouring. Let's start pouring. And let's expect something to, keep, to, to happen. And you know what happened, right? She, they kept pouring, and they kept pouring, and they kept pouring, and they kept pouring, and they filled another big vessel, another big vessel, until they had everything full, and the oil quit flowing, and they didn't have any more vessels to fill, okay? Then he runs into, in, in, the, in the same chapter there, there was a, a dear lady uh, that they called the Shunammite woman. And this Shunammite woman, her and her husband, um, they were very good people, and it, it, indication here, they were fairly wealthy people. But they began to open up their home when Elisha was traveling through the land, and he was preaching and prophesying and, and doing God's word. Um, whenever he would pass their way, he would go there because he knew he'd get a good meal there. <laughs> he'd get a good meal from that home, and they'd bless him, and they'd let him stay there overnight. Well, finally she went to her husband and she said, you know what? She said, he's such a, he's a man of God and it's just a privilege to host him here at our house. She said, can we build a little, little uh, room for him? A little prophet's chamber, prophet's room? So that whenever he stops by, he's got his own room. He can stay here as long as he wants to stay. I'll cook for him. We'll take care of him and we'll bless this man of God. So that's, that's what, what was happening. And so one time... In verse 11, it says, uh, uh, One day Elisha came, and he went on up to his room, and he laid down there in his, in his room. And he looked over at his uh, servant, his kind of his assistant, Gehazi. He said, Gehazi, I'd really like to bless this uh, woman. She's such a nice lady. She's been so good to us. She's always reaching out her hand to us and blessing us and taking care of her. And he said, uh, would you call her in here and call her over? And so he did, and uh, he asked her, he said, ma'am, he said, uh, you've gone to a lot of trouble for us to bless us and take care of us. Uh, what, can, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? You see this thing popping up all over? What can I do for you? How can I help you? Okay. And she, she says, oh, I, you know, really, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, Elisha. I don't, I don't really need anything. And, and she goes, I, I'm taken care of. And I've got a home and so on and so forth. And Elisha looked at her again and said, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And uh, she, she, would just, she was a nice lady and she just kept saying, you know, no, no, nothing, 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 I'm good. And finally, Gehazi, his, his associate there, he stepped up. And he said, Prophet, he said, she doesn't have any children. She doesn't have a son. Oh, she doesn't have a son? No, she don't have a, she don't have a son. And so Elisha looked at her, and Gehazi said, she, she doesn't have a son. And then he says, and her husband's old. <laughs> <laughs> and her husband's old. So it's kind of like, you know, those days have come and gone. So Elisha calls her over, and she's standing in the doorway of his little room there. And Elisha says, about this time next year, you're going to hold a baby boy in your arms. What can I do for you? I keep coming back to this at some point. 
Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. What can I do for you? So he says, I speak a word over you. You're gonna hold a baby, you're gonna hold a baby boy about a year from now in your arms. And she looks at him, sweet as woman, good a woman as God as she is, and she says, oh no, my Lord. <laughs> oh no, my Lord. Little hell. Oh no, my Lord. She said that, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, not, that's not gonna happen, do you understand? And she said, uh, please, man of God, she said, the scripture says, she said, please, man of God, don't mislead me like this. <laughs> don't get my hopes up. Don't get my hopes up about this. Right, because it's not going to happen. Don't put, don't put a high expectation up there. Get, get me all expecting something great and all this. And because she says, like Lene said, because it's not going to happen. All right. She's, she's living that way. She's living with this low expectation. And so you know what happened about that time. She had a baby. She had a baby boy. <laughs> and, and the Lord blessed them. And the word came true. All right? So then, when this little boy, I don't know if it says in the scripture, but my, my studies tell me that he was probably about 12 years old now. Elisha's still stopping by the house. He's still doing his work. He's still being a friend. They're still his friends and blessing him in that. And uh, uh, the little boy, 12 year old boy, he's out in the field working with dad out on the farm. And he turns to dad and he says, Dad, my head, my head, my head, I got a terrible headache. And so that he kind of collapsed and daddy took him in his arms and he ran back to the house and he took him up and, and he told he told mama about it and, and and she took him the bible says and the mother set him on her lap until the noon time so it must have been early in the morning this happened and he died in her lap he died in her lap and then the Bible says she went up and she laid him on the bed of the man of God. She laid him down on the bed of Elisha's, the room she made, they made for him. She laid him on that bed and she said to her, she called her husband over and she said, he's, he's dying. But she says, uh, would you get the servants and would you tell them to saddle up? Saddle me up some horses. Saddle me up a couple of pack donkeys. Because I'm going to go on a trip. He says, what, what are you going to do? I'm going to the man of God. Something's happening with her expectation. It's different now. Got it? It's different now. A little different. A little different than don't get my hopes up. Now it's, okay, he, he's dead. He's laying on the bed. We can count him out. Or we can say, hey, this thing's not over yet. I got some expectations. So her, her husband, he did that, called the servants. And she said, they saddled the donkeys up and she looks at those servants, those hired men. And she says to them, let's go. And she's, I can just see her shaking her finger at him. She says, oh, don't you slow down either. Don't slow down, you keep moving. Once we get moving, keep moving. I like that. She's excited. I said, she's excited. This is crisis, okay? We're talking about crisis times. Relate all this crisis times, last days. Stuff hits us. Boom, boom, boom. She might go and, I mean, I'm sure she had some emotions going on as a mother, sure. But she's saying, don't, come on, we, we, we're not giving up. We're not giving into this spirit of this thing. We're going to go after this. 
And my expectations are, I'm going to get my boy back. I'm going to get my boy back. And so she went and, and uh, uh, she goes and they travel. And uh, Elijah kind of sees her coming and he says, I, I, look, he says, look, come up there. He said, I think that's the Shunammite woman. I think that, that that's the lady that's such a blessing to our lives. And he says, you run, run to her, run and meet her and see what's going on. He says, I can't wait. And so the servant runs out there and he says, are you all right? Is everything okay? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Yeah, ask that specifically. Is your husband okay? Is your, is, your, is your son okay? Is everything all right? And you know what she said? She said, everything's all right. That was her first response. Everything's all right. What? <laughs> everything's all right. Remember that old song we used to sing, I got a feeling? <laughs> I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. She's living that way. It's a time of crisis. Her life's falling apart. Things that God gave her, it looks like she's lost the very blessings. And the very things that God gave her, her home is crumbling. And all this stuff is going on, but she's... She's not lost something that she got way back 12 years ago when a man of God, a person of God came along and said, you know what? You don't think this is ever going to happen? Let's trust God. Let's believe God for a miracle here. And a miracle happened. And now what's, what's going on? She's at a whole different place now. She learned something. She learned something through all of that. And now she's, she's, remember Paul writes in Romans, he says, for we serve a God that calls things that are not as though they are. Is it all right? No, it ain't all right. Things are falling apart. My son died. Is it all right? Everything's all right. Why? She got different eyes now. She got a different expectation now, okay, in her life. And so she, she uh, says that. But when she gets to uh, Elisha, she, she uh, takes hold, falls down and takes hold of his feet, which is a real sign in those days of humility, uh, of, uh, of honor. And also when she took hold of his feet, it, it did mean, I'm desperate, Elisha. We got to... Something's got to change right now. Something's got to change, okay? And the, the, his, uh, his uh, associate, when he saw her grab his feet and stuff, his associate said, oh, get away. No, you're, you're too close. Shouldn't be carrying on like that. Get back. And Elisha said, no, leave her alone. It's all right. He said, she, she's in bitter distress. I can tell something's happening. She, he said, the Lord hasn't shown me, but I, I can tell. Anybody can tell she's in bitter distress. Okay. And she says in verse 28, she says, she says, Elisha, did I not ask you 12 years ago or 13 years ago, did I not, uh, did I not ask you for a son, my Lord? Didn't you get my hopes up? She said, didn't I tell you then? Don't raise my hopes. It's right there in the scriptures. Verse 28. Didn't I tell you not to get my hopes up? Remember those days? Remember all of that that happened, Elisha? My hopes did rise. And I did get my hopes up. And I did start living with expectation in my life. And Elisha, she tells him what's happened. And Elisha looks at the Hazai, his whole shit. He says, tuck your, tuck your belt in, tuck your shirt in, and your cloak in, you know, it would be down. He said, fold it all up, tuck it in like they did in those days. Put your belt around it, keep it up, put my staff in your hand, and run. And run to that little boy, run on ahead of, of, of me and uh, Shunammite, and you run on ahead of him. And he said, when you get there, take my staff and, and place it on his face, just cover him with it. Place it on his face and coat. And he says, listen, don't greet anyone. 
Lengthy greetings in those days. Met someone on the road like that. You ask how the family were. You ask how things were. Are you healthy? A blessing upon you, and so on and so forth. You know, and, and it wasn't just hey, <laughs> <laughs> or like I do now. This what's up, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, it was it was it was courtesy. It was a ritual. It was all of that. So he said, don't 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 be doing that. Go. You just go. Don't greet anyone you meet. If anyone greets you, don't even answer them, he says. Don't, don't get engaged. Don't get involved. Don't, don't do that. Lay my staff on, it, on his face. And the Shunammite woman looks at him, and she says to uh, Elisha, she says, As surely as the Lord lives, I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving you till we see this thing through. Hallelujah. Till we see this thing through, okay? And that's exactly what happened. And you guys know the story. You all know the Bible. And uh, the little boy was raised back to life, wasn't he? He was raised back to life. What I want us to see in that this morning is this. Her past answer in her time of crisis, when she did allow her hopes to get, and she seen an answer to prayer, it built a greater expectation in her life for her future. She referred to it, didn't she? When she went to Elisha, she said, don't you remember? You remember, Elisha, what God has done? You remember what he did? Remember he gave me a son when I didn't have a son? Remember that? What have I done with my past answers? What have you done with your past answers? What have you done with what God has, has done in your life? You've cried out to him, right? We've all served the Lord here. We've cried out to him. We've had times in our lives where we, we didn't know. Maybe times we didn't even know if we were going to live. We cried out to the Lord. And the Lord came. And maybe we didn't have a whole lot of expectation at that point. Maybe we were just crying out, give me some mercy, Lord. Give me some like this Shunammite. She didn't have a whole lot of faith. But she had enough to say, all right, let's go for it. And God answered. Now God doesn't expect those experiences just to die. He doesn't expect us just to forget about them in our lives. He doesn't expect us to be in 2020 and say, well, that was yesterday. <laughs> God wants us to look back and to say, I remember, I remember, and I remember you answered prayer, God, and I remember you got involved and you intervened and things changed and it was different because God, you came in. And what, what God wants to see in our lives is this, we, we use those experiences, even if we had low expectation at the time, but God came through, we use them as springboards to greater expectations in our lives. I mean, if, if, if you've seen God do some things in your life, and you go into these last days, and you face the stuff that we're going to be facing, and we hang our heads and we say, oh no. Oh no, this is, this is terrible. How am I going to make it? What's going to happen? If we, if we get into that stuff of the world in these last days, it, to me it's like God wants to just kind of slap us in the face and say, hey, wake up. <laughs> Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Don't you remember what I've done? Don't you remember when you cried out in your life and you, you really didn't have, you know, a, a high expectation? But I took that cry and I answered you. I don't expect you to just let that let that die. I expect, the Bible says, I expect you to go from faith to what? To greater faith. 
Faith to greater faith. An expectation, maybe a low expectation, but I expect that low expectation. I answered prayer. You seen a miracle. I saved you. I delivered you. I healed you. Now, take that expectation and have a greater expectation in your life now. And be somebody like an Elisha who can look, say to others, hey, hey, I'm here. I can help you. Let's talk about this. Let's pray about this. Let's believe God. All right? And see something great in these last days. Okay? Christian, come on.